Hi, this is Joe Hilder from MyHeap.com. Hey, uh, I've been working on this um, Atlas TH-54. It's 10-inch um, metal lathe, 36 inches between center, uh, off and on for a while since I got it. And I'm slowly kind of cleaning things up and, um, you know, making it so I can run it again. Well, one of the interesting things was after I finished with the headstock and the back gears and that sort of thing, I thought the next logical thing was to clean the uh, counter shaft assembly. Now the counter shaft, as you know, hangs there behind the uh, headstock. Um, has a uh, multiple comb pulley here where the um, belts run uh, to change speeds. Now this lathe has been um, modified from all the images that I've seen of the parts list, and I will. Um, here in a few minutes, uh, show you the show you the image from the parts list. But let me show you what's what's happened here. Now, not having a um, a machine around that I could uh, compare to, um, what we have here, uh, I'm guessing, is uh, the shaft has been uh, turned down. Okay, of course, there's a grease hole there, and then of course the end of the shaft is hollow. Now on this one here, both ends of the shaft are drilled and tapped for a zerk fitting. So um, zerk fitting was screwed in here. Um, of course, when grease is pumped in there, it will evacuate through this hole uh, up into the up into the bearing. I hope I had that in frame. But uh, the interesting part here is the castings um, look like they have been. Uh, bored out, okay, and then usually these uh, uh, bearings have been pushed in there, okay, and you see these bearings are um, uh, fan fear bearings, and they are, um, I believe they are 202, uh, hang on a minute, I'll tell you, they're uh, 202 KT bearings, okay, and on one side they have a dust cover or a seal cover or whatever on the other side they're they're open and just have the retainer so these were pressed in here one on each side okay um, like so and then these uh, uh, of course you know were pressed flush to the end of the into the casting here and uh, would allow the grease to pump in and fill these bearings up and of course, they were slid onto the end of the shaft. So, I don't know who made the modification to the lathe um, to do that, but I thought it was kind of an interesting modification. Of course, the grease in there was uh, pretty dry, and, and I wanted to clean it out and, and uh, you know, just get new grease in there. But now I've discovered that one of these uh, bearings is pretty rough, and there's another one that's not much better. It kind of catches. So I'm thinking that um, <clears throat> I'm going to replace these bearings, but I think probably what I want to do, and so I'd like to have an opinion from, from folks. Uh, talk to Mr. Peterson a little bit, and he seems to agree that uh, or that uh, he would he would maybe do this too, is I'm going to buy some sealed bearings uh, the same size, um, sealed on both sides, press them back into the castings, and we'll just dispense with the grease because they're sealed. So anyway, I just want to show you this slight change uh, that has been made and like I said I don't know if uh, this shaft is originally um, this large size right here and this has been turned down um, that's what it looks like to me maybe the end of the shaft was uh, then uh, faced off uh, where the normal grease cup that would screw to, to grease the bearings would go um, but one thing that I am you know, I'm not sure about, uh, one person suggested that I just get the uh, original bearings that went back in there. And I don't know, I guess they were this smaller bore that you see there. So I couldn't, I you know, with the condition that these are, are right now, wh where they look like they've been bored out, uh, for these bearings over here to be pressed into, <coughs> excuse me, um, there, I couldn't put the original cage roller bearing back in there anyway. I'd have to get different castings and, and, um, uh, I just uh, this you know this lathe is um, it's pretty worn and and uh, it was I'm piecemealing it together anyway just because I don't have a, a larger lathe uh, uh, I have a little bitty a Dunlap lathe that's not really worth the 
metal sometimes that I think that it's made out of. So I'm just interested in, in learning how to run this. So I, I'm going to stick with this setup. Again, I'm going to show a picture of what it's supposed to look like. And, uh, but I think I'm going to replace these bearings with uh, sealed bearings and, and just go that route. So uh, I'm kind of curious uh, what you guys think of, of this modification. Is this something that uh, um, you would do to your lathe? Do you think this is, con would you consider this an upgrade um, compared to the original setup um, or what? So I'd like to have your feedback if you would uh, be kind enough to comment below and, and let me know. I'd appreciate it. Uh, again, um, um, if you have any questions or, or if you want to see more and more details about this, just let me know and, and we can do some more video. All right, so let's get to, uh, let's get to the uh, picture of the, of the parts uh, diagram of the original lathe. So what I have here is a picture of the countershaft assembly that you can find in the uh, Atlas 10F um, parts uh, document. And if you don't have that document, you can get that from the Atlas Lathe group from uh, uh, Yahoo, or you can get it from uh, vintagemachinery.org. Uh, Mr. Uh, Keith has it there. Uh, so it's freely available. So as we look at this, uh, we uh, hopefully you can see my mouse cursor moving here. Um, so we have the counter shaft, which to me looks like be a single diameter, and I think it's three quarter of an inch. And then um, we have the bearing housing, and then you know you have these caged bearings that are slid into the housing, and then it's retained by um, um, I think this is a felt washer, and then a collar on the pulley side, and then the pulley um, on, on on that side, and then on the other side of the shaft, it's just simply held in place with two collars. You have uh, two felt washers and then uh, the casting and then the um, caged bearing. And then the end of the shaft is, is threaded and then we have a grease cup. And normally you would pack this full of grease and then as you tighten it in it would force grease through the shaft and then out of that little hole uh, in the shaft that would then squeeze up into the uh, bearing uh, to lubricate the bearing. So this is what um, I understand that it's supposed to be like and, and uh, this is what I'm comparing to and not ha and not having one available to me to see um, uh, this is the closest thing that I have so anyway I just want to share that and um, the other thing that I want to say the uh, uh, bearings um, and shaft size that I have that I'll uh, uh, when I go uh, to do the next video I'll I'll post um, the measured sizes of those and hopefully that'll help Okay, so um, now that we've looked at that, um, I'm going to go ahead and cut it here, and and uh, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to watch this video and, and the time that uh, you've spent with me here at our channel, and hopefully I can get more videos out. I know i got some CNC stuff that I'm wanting to do. Uh, work is keeping me bogged down. i got a lot of projects here at home and that sort of thing. So um, until next time, if you see a vet, um, thank them. And uh, other than that, have a blessed day.